On the 28th of September 1934, a girl was born in Paris, whose name was Brigitte Anne Marie. Her father was engaged in business. Her mother was a housewife, and she brought up the children. From an early age, the future actress was brought up a strict Catholic. Originally, Brigitte was not a beautiful girl. She was even called an ugly duckling. She wore special glasses and braces to correct her bite. She was squint-eyed and her hair was of a dull shade. But her figure was something Bodot always was proud of. Her mother had a passion for ballet and insisted that both daughters attend dance classes. At the age of 13, Bardot was enrolled at the Paris Higher National Conservatory of Music and Dance. She was lucky to attend the class of Boris Knyazev, a choreographer of Russian origin. When she grew up, the image of the ugly duckling was gone. The girl blossomed. It was hard to ignore such a beauty, and Brigitte was offered shoots in fashion magazines. Her parents were against filming in a fashion magazine. But they were persuaded and assured that nothing bad would happen. No one would know their daughter's name. So the photos were signed as BB. So in 1949 she appeared in a fashion magazine L, where she was spotted by Roger Vadim, a young director, and invited to act in a film. Once again her parents were against it. It's indecent, it's vulgar to act in the movies. But Brigitte's grandfather said she should be given a chance. She was approved for the role after an audition quite quickly. But the film was not released, the production was shut down. But there was a spark between Brigitte and Vadim, and they fell in love. The actress lost her head over love, as her reckless behavior indicated. Parents did not approve of the choice of their daughter. However, at the age of 18, Brigitte finally married Vadim. In 1956, it occurred to Vadim to make a film of his own, starring his wife. It was called And God Created Woman. The film was a great success in European and American cinemas. Brigitte was compared to the idols of the time – Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor. She was only 23 and the whole world was following her. She was being emulated. Women all over the world were dreaming of dresses and hairstyles like Bador. Everything was fine, but in 1957 their marriage fell apart. The actress had another boyfriend, Jean-Louis Trentignan, her partner in filming. They started to live together, but this union existed for only two years. Soon after this breakup, the actress married again. This time her husband was Jacques Charrier. A year later Brigitte gave birth to a son Nicholas. Later in her memoirs, she admitted that at that time she had no maternal feelings for the child and even refused to breastfeed. But soon the actress started an affair with actor Semi Fry, and her husband found out about it. They divorced. At the dissolution of the marriage trial, Bardot waived her right to bring up her son. Nicolas Jacques Charrier stayed with his father. Bardot's third marriage was to millionaire and fashion photographer Günther Sachs. However, this marriage lasted three years. At the age of 58, the actress was married again. The wedding with Bernard Dormal took place in 1992. Brigitte divorced him later. Our beauty had such a tumultuous personal life. As for Bado's 21-year acting career, she has starred in 48 films. Her last role was in If Don Juan Was a Woman in 1973. She was not only a successful actress, but also a successful singer. Few people know that Brigitte recorded more than 80 songs, among them many hits. In 1973, Bardot announced that she intended to end her film career. The actress used to say that she never considered cinema to be her love. Like all Libra signs, Brigitte has a strong sense of justice. So, instead of living a reclusive life, she decided to devote her life to caring for animals. So she created the Brigitte Bardot Foundation. Its main objective is to combat the capture of wild animals for zoos and circuses, 
Hunt for Seas and Whales, as well as anti-poaching. The foundation opposes fur coats and horse meat and is also involved in the protection of endangered animal species. An interesting fact. Few people know that Bador is a natural brunette. Only once the actress appeared before the audience with dark hair. In the Contempt movie. Also, Brigitte could get a role in Angelica the Marquise of the Angels. But she refused to participate in the project. Today, the actress lives in a villa in Saint-Tropez, accompanied by a couple of hundred of pets. She's getting old and gaunt and has to use crutches to walk around. However, the fans are delighted to note that the star continues to take good care of herself, despite her age. As of today, she's 87 years old. Sophia Loren is a famous Italian actress who was born on September 20th, 1934 in Rome, in a charity orphanage for single mothers. Her full name was Sofia Villani Ciccolone. Sofia's mother, Romilda Villani, lived in Pozzuoli, a small town near Naples. Besides Sofia, she had another daughter. The future actress spent her childhood in poverty, in a shabby and cramped apartment. Moreover, Sophie carried through her entire life the feeling that she was illegitimate. Her father is unknown. During the war in Italy, their family faced another problem – starvation. The actress's mother tried her best to get food for her daughters. Unlike her sister, Sophie was very tall and thin. At school she was very often called Stichette, meaning perch. But as she grew up, she was becoming prettier and prettier. During one interview she confessed that at a certain point it was as if she had hatched from an egg. In 1950, Sophia Loren, following her mother's advice, participated in the contest Miss Italia. Her grandmother made the dresses for the contest out of pink curtains and old white painted shoes. However, such an outfit did not prevent the future actress from winning the hearts of the jury and becoming Miss Elegance. As a result of the contest, Sophie won a trip to Rome, which completely changed her life. She gets a job as a fashion model and appears in little-known Italian magazines. Sophie's first paychecks were spent by Romilda. She paid Riccardo Ciccolone, the father of her first daughter, to allow both girls to bear his name. The stigma of being an illegitimate child was gone. Sophie, however, was not too happy about it. Soon she changed her name to Sofia Lazzaro, because she was advised to come up with a good-sounding pseudonym. But that name didn't become her last one either. At the time, Sophie was playing in the movie Africa Under the Seas. The producers wanted a less Italian name. And inspired by a Swedish actress Martha Torren, they came up with a pseudonym – Sophia Loren. Carla Ponti spotted Sophia Loren at a beauty contest. But fate brought them together a couple of years later in Rome. At the time, he was the father of two children. He made more than 20 successful films and developed another star, Gina Lolo Brigida. Carlo invites Sophie to a movie audition, where she flat out refuses to change her appearance in any way. However, it did not stop Ponti. He must have realized that he was making the right bet. Carlo was a pillar of support for Sophia. At that time, she could support her sister and her mother on her own, but she still did not allow herself to be too picky about the roles. Lolo Brigida refuses the role of Aida in the opera film adaptation, and Sophie was chosen instead. At the same time, Lorraine became the mistress of Ponti. The producer was married to Giuliana Fiastri. At that time, their connection was more of a friendship. They were like a coach and an athlete, as their son Eduardo Ponti once said. Sophia Loren got the role in the American film The Pride and the Passion. 
Her co-stars in the film were Frank Sinatra and Cary Grant. Before filming, Sophie was invited to a party, hosted by Stanley Kramer, the director of the film. The actress was madly nervous. At the party, Cary Grant teased Sophie by intentionally confusing her with Lola Brigida, but that did not prevent the actress from gaining his confidence. Later they would meet again, and then Carrie would fall madly in love with Sophie. After filming, Sophie and Ponty went on their first trip together. They lived in a luxury hotel in Beverly Hills, enjoying the freedom and each other's company. Ponty and Sophie had been secretly engaged earlier. Hollywood did not understand Sophia Loren. It did not feel her energy and tremendous potential. They saw me as your typical foreign actress and tried to change me, as Sophie later recalled. At that time, her next work was the film Boy on a Dolphin by Jean Negulesco. The 1958 film Houseboat is considered to be Sophia's best role. The actress played the role of an ordinary Italian girl. Her colleague Cary Grant increased the feeling of calmness on the set. They managed as never before to show the chemistry of love on camera. Ponty did not like it. He even raised the question of a formal divorce. But Grant, meanwhile, continued to win the heart of the actress. You know, I had to make a choice, says Loren. But Carlo was Italian. He was from my world. And Cary Grant was not. Her heart did not fail Sophie and soon Ponty divorced his wife. But the Vatican refused to accept the marriage of Sophie and Ponty and accused the director of bigamy and Sophie Loren of illegal cohabiting. They were hiding. They got married in France and rented an apartment under fake names. Later Loren said this on the situation. I don't regret anything. The film Two Women changed Sophie's acting career tremendously. It was one of her first serious roles. Initially, it was Anna Magnani who was supposed to play the role of the widowed mother. But she joked by saying that Sophie Loren would be great at playing a 50-year-old woman. Loren took Anna's words seriously. Filming began. Vittorio De Sica was chosen as a director. As a matter of fact, Sophie had to play her own mother, Romilda. It was not difficult to play this role. It was this film that made me a real actress, Sophie said, and then jokingly added, in the end, I owe my career to the whims of Magnani. For her role, Sophie was nominated for an Oscar, along with Audrey Hepburn for Breakfast at Tiffany's. Sophie ended up winning although she was not confident in her abilities. Later, Sophie admitted, I became famous in America because of the Italian films. Had I continued acting in Hollywood, I would not have won an Oscar. Grant was Sophie's best partner in American cinema and Mastroianni in Italian cinema. They got along perfectly in real life, and yet they were able to show true passion on the big screen. They were especially successful in the film Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow in 1963. By the way, one of the most erotic scenes of this film would be reshot many years later. The 60-year-old Sophie Loren would dance for Marcello once again. It would be their last appearance together in a movie. Mastroianni died of pancreatic cancer in 1996. As a woman, Sophie experienced horrible events. She had two miscarriages due to a hormonal imbalance. However, during her third pregnancy, she decided to take care of herself by taking a vacation with a strict bed rest on the shores of the Lake Geneva. In 1968, Carlo Ponti Jr. was born, who now works as a pianist. And four years later, Eduardo Ponti was born. The younger brother followed in his father's footsteps and became a producer. A few miles from Rome, Carlo and Sofia established themselves in a gorgeous 16th century villa. However, life in luxury did not last long. 
In 1977, their home was invaded by the Carabinieri. The couple was accused of tax evasion and taking money out of the country. It was only in the 90s that they got the villa and all the valuables back. Before that, both Lorraine and Ponti spent some time in prison. Sophie 17 days and Ponti 4 years. Despite this, the couple continued to love each other. In spite of her age, Sophie continues to act in movies. In 2010, she starred in her son Eduardo's movie Between Strangers. And in 2001, she easily outshone Penelope Cruz in the movie Nine. Ponty died in 2007 of lung disease. It's been a while since he died, but I'm not getting any better. I desperately miss my Carlo, my dear husband. But what can you do? You cannot possess everything at once in life," Sophie said in an interview. Sophie's last role was as Madame Rose in the film All Life Ahead by her second son Eduardo Ponti, which was released on November 6, 2020. The most recent news is that the ceiling fell on Sophie Loren at her home in Geneva, where she stayed during the pandemic. Sophie suffered some minor injuries. But in general, she was only slightly frightened. Her health is good. To date, Sophia Loren is 86 years old. She still lives in Geneva with her secretary, Ines Brucher. On the 27th of February 1932, Elizabeth Taylor, a famous British American actress and three time Oscar winner, was born. She had a difficult fate. Sure, cinema brought the actress great popularity and wealth, but damaged her health. Psychotropic drugs and alcohol helped her survive quarrels with producers and partners, which greatly undermined her health. The little girl Elizabeth was brought to the cinema by her mother, also an actress. From 1943, when she was just 11 years old, until almost the end of 90s, movies with her participation were released every year. Directors did not hurry to give her major roles, not discerning her talent behind the beautiful appearance. Taylor's look has always had a special charm and expressiveness. The actress was lucky. In addition to a very rare shade of eyes, lavender purple, she had a rare mutation, a double row of lashes. Taylor got her first serious role in 1950 in The Father of the Bride, while her role in A Place in the Sun made the whole world talk about her. Even back then, Elizabeth demonstrated her difficult character. She did not like most of the films in which she starred and was annoyed by the total control of the company. She even wanted to break the contract and end her barely started career. Luckily, Taylor changed her mind. That would have been a terrible mistake. Eventually, things got better, and in the mid-50s, Taylor began to receive major roles in serious movies. As a result, the actress won three Oscars during her career, one of which was for the role in The Butterfield 8. Although Taylor herself considered her performance in the movie as the most awful. Well, we won't comment on that, talented people are often very self-critical. The truly legendary role played by the actress was in the Cleopatra movie. She did not originally want to star in this film, and in order to politely refuse the role, Taylor said she would act only if she was paid one million dollars. But much to everyone's surprise, the producers agreed to such a fee. On the set of the movie Giant, Elizabeth got a terrible blow. Her partner, a handsome man and a dream of all the girls, James Dean, died in a car crash. As a result, the actress had to be treated for a nervous breakdown. Marriage was also an adventure for Liz. She was married nine times to eight men. To one of them, Richard Burton, she was married twice. The actress's last husband was a simple working man, Larry Fortansky. They met at the clinic, where they were both treated for alcohol addiction. Larry left Taylor as soon as she got her health problems. In her famous book My Love Affair with the Jewels, Taylor wrote, I only slept with my husbands, that's how I was brought up, and I never had lovers. We can talk a lot about the health of the actress. No actor, perhaps, had such a long medical history as she did. It all began with a spinal injury, after which the actress suffered from back pain for the rest of her life. 
a terrible hindrance for any actor. Frequently she had to leave the set on a stretcher. Not only that, a big challenge for Taylor were her constant bronchitis and pneumonia. Twice she even had to have a tracheotomy to keep her breathing, and once she was on a ventilator to stay alive. She also had her ovaries and part of her uterus removed due to cancer, and on top of that she suffered from adult smallpox. The actress also struggled with being overweight all her life. In 1997 she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. It was another war for her life, in which she won. The photo of her shaved head became something of a symbol of hope for many in the same trouble. This woman inspired countless people. In 2002 another terrible diagnosis was announced – skin cancer. But Taylor coped with it as well, having undergone complex treatment and chemotherapy. Quitting her acting career, Elizabeth went into business and released a perfume, luxurious as herself, and won her third Oscar for outstanding contribution to cinema. In her final years, Taylor hardly ever left the house. She moved in a wheelchair studded with diamonds. The actress died of heart failure on the 23rd of March 2011 in a medical center in Los Angeles. She was 79 years old. After her death, Michael Welding Jr., the actress's son, said, She was an extraordinary woman who lived her life to the fullest every single day. Her legacy will never disappear. Her spirit will always be with us. Her love will live forever in our hearts. And we can't agree more. This woman was a phenomenon. She immortalized herself. And that is all for today. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel and write your comments down below. Thank you for watching.